It's been almost a year since I took matters into my own hands. The rain never stops in this city, washing over the crime like it can hide the rot beneath. But I see it. The gangs. The corrupt. The innocent too scared to speak. This place wasn't always like this. But now fear rules every corner. I walk these streets every night trying to make a difference. But sometimes, it feels like the darkness is winning. People say the city's beyond saving. That one person can't stop the flood of crime. But I can't just stand by. If I don't fight for it, no one will. So I'll keep going. Even if it kills me. The criminals will fear me. Batman Arkham Origins, the often overlooked entry in the acclaimed Arkham series, released in 2013. While the game faced considerable criticism at launch, with many feeling it was a step down from its predecessors, over time it's gained a reputation as an underrated gem. Developed by Warner Brothers Games Montreal instead of the usual Arkham developer Rocksteady Studios, Arkham Origins offered a distinct take on Batman's early career, presenting both an intriguing narrative and unique character dynamic that add to the series' overall lore. Despite its flaws, Arkham Origins stands out as an ambitious entry with both strengths and weaknesses that deserve a deeper look. So let's have a quick visit back to one of my personal favorite Arkham games, Batman Arkham Origins. The game opens with Roman Sionis, known as Black Mask, escaping from Blackgate Penitentiary and starting a breakout of the prison's most dangerous inmates. Black Mask has taken over Gotham's underworld, and his influence runs deep within the city's criminal networks. He's a ruthless mob boss who feels threatened by the rising legend of Batman, who's been fighting crime for about two years by this point. To eliminate Batman, Black Mask places a $50 million bounty on his head, luring eight of the world's deadliest assassins to Gotham on Christmas Eve. These assassins are all highly skilled and motivated by either the enormous reward or the prestige of being the one to kill the Dark Knight. The main antagonists of the game are assassins, and those assassins are Deathstroke, Killer Croc, Deadshot, Firefly, Electrocutioner, Shiva, Copperhead, and Bane. The game begins with Batman discovering that Black Mask has orchestrated a breakout at Blackgate Penitentiary. He infiltrates the prison and quickly subdues Killer Croc, one of the first assassins to target him. Batman learns from Croc that Black Mask is the one responsible for placing the bounty on his head, which drives the plot forward. Croc reveals that Black Mask is holding a meeting with his assassins, setting up the core conflict of the story, Batman versus the assassins. Uncovering a meetup at Jezebel Plaza, Batman stakes out the area, discovering a meetup of Penguin's goons. After interrogating the leader and taking his SIM card, Batman triangulates the location of the Penguin inside the final offer and proceeds to the ship. Once inside, Batman finds himself inside an arena, facing off against one of the assassins, the Electrocutioner, who is quickly dispatched by Batman's boot. Heading deeper into the ship, Batman finds Penguin torturing Alberto Falcone, telling him to make his father back out of the illegal weapons market. Interrupting, Batman demands to know where Black Mask is. Penguin reveals that Lacey Towers had a murder that night inside the penthouse that was supposed to be one of Sionis' safe houses. However, that's all we get as Deathstroke pulls Batman out of the room and our fight with him begins. One of the most technical and physical confrontations of the game, their fight is intense, with Deathstroke testing Batman's tactical prowess. Batman manages to defeat Deathstroke, adding another layer of respect from Gotham's criminal underworld. From there, Batman begins his investigation by tracking down Black Mask. His first lead takes him to Lacey Towers, a luxury apartment where a murder has taken place. At the crime scene, Batman finds two bodies, one of Black Mask's girlfriends and a man who he assumes is Black Mask himself. Using his detective skills, Batman recreates the crime scene and deduces that the murder was staged. Black Mask is still alive. The investigation into Black Mask deepens when Batman discovers that the real threat is not Black Mask, but the Joker. The Joker had kidnapped Roman Sionis and assumed his identity, using Black Mask's resources to orchestrate the night's chaos and draw Batman into his deadly game. 
This is a pivotal moment in the story, marking the first time that Batman and the Joker cross paths. At this point, Batman had never encountered the Joker before, making this interaction the start of their iconic rivalry. Joker reveals his love for chaos, demonstrating a sharp contrast with Batman's sense of justice and order. This marks the first time that Joker becomes fixated on Batman, setting the foundation for their future interactions in the Arkham series. And after revealing himself, Joker escalates the situation by taking over the Gotham Royal Hotel. He sets it up as a massive death trap, taking hostages and wiring the entire hotel with explosives. Batman infiltrates the hotel where he faces the Joker directly for the first time. The Joker taunts Batman with his nihilistic philosophy, attempting to force Batman to question his own sense of morality. The interaction between the two sets the tone for their relationship, with Joker seeing Batman as a challenge, someone who shares a deeper connection with him because of their opposing views on chaos and order. The Gotham Royal Hotel mission was a significant set piece, showing the Joker's unpredictability and brutality, while Batman races to save innocent lives caught in the crossfire. In a tense confrontation, Batman manages to stop Joker from blowing up the hotel and captures him, sending him to Blackgate Prison. While Joker is in custody, the threat is far from over. One of the assassins hired to kill Batman, Bane, becomes a central figure in the plot. Unlike Joker, Bane is a direct physical challenge for Batman. He's intelligent, methodical, and uses Venom, a super steroid to enhance his already immense strength. Bane quickly realizes that Bruce Wayne is Batman, setting up a much more personal confrontation. The realization that Batman knows his true identity raises the stakes significantly. Bane serves as both a physical and psychological adversary, forcing Batman to confront his own limitations. Batman confronts Bane multiple times throughout the night. During their final battle, Bane injects himself with TN1, an even more powerful version of Venom, transforming him into a hulking, monstrous version of himself. Batman's struggle against Bane is grueling, symbolizing not only a physical trial, but a metaphor for the burden of his role as Gotham's protector. Ultimately, Batman manages to defeat Bane, though it leaves a lasting impact on the both of them. Bane's exposure to TN1 causes severe memory loss, meaning he forgets Batman's true identity by the end of the game. While Bane is defeated, Joker is still in play. After being captured and sent to Blackgate Prison, Joker quickly takes over the facility, staging a riot. He lures Batman to the prison for one final confrontation. Here, Joker tests Batman's moral limits, creating scenarios designed to push Batman into breaking his no-kill rule. Joker's psychological games reach their climax as he tries to provoke Batman into killing him, believing that deep down, they are similar, both products of Gotham's corruption. However, despite Joker's provocations and the chaos he creates, Batman refuses to kill him, staying true to his code. This moment cements the defining dynamic between the two characters. Joker is fascinated by Batman's unwavering morality, and Batman is disgusted but committed to not crossing the line that Joker so eagerly flaunts. Batman ultimately subdues Joker, putting an end to the night's mayhem. This confrontation solidifies Joker's obsession with Batman as he becomes fixated on the idea that only Batman can understand him, viewing Batman as his true equal and nemesis. Meanwhile, Joker's defeat marks the beginning of Batman's long-standing vigil over Gotham's future. As the night comes to a close, Batman's actions throughout the events on Christmas Eve help to reshape how Gotham views him. Initially considered a myth or a dangerous vigilante, by the end of the game, he's earned a degree of respect from both the citizens of Gotham and members of the police force, including Captain James Gordon. Gordon, who starts the game off as a staunch critic of Batman, begins to see him as a necessary force for the good of Gotham. This marks the beginning of a crucial partnership between Batman and Gordon which would go on to define Gotham's fight against crime in the years to come. So of course I think this game is a pretty epic game. But that doesn't mean it doesn't have its own flaws. One of the main criticisms of Batman Arkham Origins was its perceived lack of innovation. By 2013, the Arkham series had already established itself as a revolutionary franchise, blending tight combat, engaging stealth mechanics, and a sprawling open world Gotham City. Arkham Origins, however, didn't stray far from the formula laid out by its predecessors. The combat system, while still fluid and enjoyable, felt overly familiar to those who had already experienced it in Arkham Asylum and Arkham City. Critics argued that the game didn't introduce enough new mechanics to differentiate itself from its predecessors, causing it to feel like a safe, if not redundant, entry in the franchise. 
Traversal through Gotham, while impressive in scope, suffered from the same lack of innovation. Arkham Origins presented a larger city map than Arkham City, yet it often felt emptier, with fewer side activities and less engagement overall. Players quickly noticed that Gotham's streets felt barren, with fewer thugs populating the city than one might expect on Christmas Eve, even amidst the chaos. This lack of density contributed to the game feeling somewhat lifeless compared to the vibrant and dangerous environments seen in earlier entries. For all its mechanical shortcomings, Arkham Origins shines in its storytelling and character development. One of the game's greatest strengths is its exploration of Batman's formative years. The story strikes a balance between action and introspection, providing a deeper look into Bruce Wayne's psychology. He's less seasoned and more prone to letting his emotions drive him, which leads to moments of doubt and raw vulnerability. The relationship between Bruce and Alfred is one of the most compelling aspects of the narrative. Alfred is portrayed not merely as a loyal servant, but as a father figure who fears for Bruce's safety. The emotional weight of their dynamic is palpable, especially in moments where Bruce dismisses Alfred's concerns. These exchanges are essential in showing how Bruce is still growing into the persona of Batman. So Batman Arkham Origins might not have reached the heights of Batman Arkham Asylum or Arkham City. Okay, but it carved out its own place in this series by exploring an era of Batman's life that had not yet been depicted in the games. The flaws, familiar gameplay mechanics, technical issues, and lack of true innovation are undeniable. Yet they don't overshadow the game's narrative strengths. The emotional depth of the story, the evolution of Batman's relationships, and the introduction of the Joker's madness all contribute to a memorable, if imperfect, experience. With time, many fans have come to appreciate Arkham Origins for what it is. A gritty, atmospheric, and emotionally engaging entry in the Arkham series that provides a deeper understanding of Batman's character. It may not be the series' high point, but it remains a crucial chapter in the Dark Knight's journey.